What is up guys, it's Dr. Sammy, and today I wanna to talk about my technique for repairing broken teeth. Restoring broken teeth with composite resin is by far one of my most favorite procedures to perform in the office. However, it can be the most technically challenging things to do right. Last year I made a video giving a visual of the procedure, but failed to give any reason behind the technique. In this video, I want to talk about the sequence of restoring the anterior teeth and give a few tips and tricks along the way. So let's break it down. The first concept we need to talk about is bonding. Bond strength of the composite resin to the patient's natural teeth determines the long-term success of this restoration. Unfortunately, fractured teeth doesn't give the dentist much retentive features to lock the filling in place. So we need to do everything in our power to increase bond strength by our physical and chemical preparation design. To start off, I roughen the enamel surface with a medium grit diamond burr in a star-shaped pattern. This two to three millimeter pattern beveled microscopically increases surface area of the tooth which allows for greater adhesion. I gradually fade out the preparation to the periphery because it helps establish a seamless transition from natural tooth to the filling. If this bevel is too short or doesn't fade out appropriately, then you will be able to distinguish where the filling begins and ends, and that would be an aesthetic disaster. Next, we need to chemically prepare the tooth. A 35% phosphoric acid etchant helps with adhesion by creating a porous retentive surface on the tooth. I extend the etchant beyond the margins to once again facilitate the seamless transition from tooth to composite resin. The white Teflon tape helps protect the adjacent tooth from this potent chemical. If you don't have a Teflon tape or Mylar strip to protect the adjacent tooth, this chemical may interact with that tooth and create post-operative sensitivity. After a firm wash and dry, you will notice that the etched enamel appears frosty. This is a great way to tell if the surface has been etched for a long enough time. Next, I paint on my bonding agent with a brush. I apply multiple layers to ensure that the porous enamel was saturated with bond. However, it is important to thin this agent out because it can interfere with the adhesion of the composite resin to the tooth. After curing this bonding agent, we can move on to the artistry of composite layer. I begin every class for restoration with the formation of a palatal shelf. In this case, I have a prefabricated putty to help form the lingual shelf. And I know many of you are probably thinking, how would you have that available if the patient came in with a fracture? Well, it simply involves a semi-rigid putty matrix and using a burr to cut back to the desired incisal length. I will definitely make a video showing how I create a lingual index. In fact, leave a comment down below if that's something that you would want to see. So this lingual stent is incredibly useful as it allows me to predictably build up the back shell of the filling with ease. Once formed, I can start layering composite using dentin shade for the body of the tooth and enamel shade for the outermost surface of the tooth. Your decision in layering and characterization ultimately stems from evaluation of the contralateral tooth to establish symmetry. Some teeth are polychromatic, some teeth have unique translucency properties in the incisal edge, and some others have unique color schemes. Taking some time to notice these characterizations makes a huge difference in the final result of the composite filling. In this video, I layer the tooth as if it were monochromatic. I always leave a little room for the final composite layer in order to extend that layer over the entire restoration. One continuous layer makes for a smooth surface that can be polished quite easily. In this video, I use a wheel to blend out the restoration, but today I would use a medium stiffness brush as it works better in my hands. Now it's time for our refinements. The natural contours of our teeth have an impact on how light reflects off the tooth, which can truly transform a filling. This is why it is so important to fine tooth the contours. Using a pencil to lightly mark the mesiofacial contours on this tooth helps me see where I would refine the restoration. I always start with a fine diamond for bulk cutback while small refinements are completed with a coarse red disc. I work this red disc till I have the contours exactly where I need them to be. And I finalize the polish using a series of polishing discs with aluminum oxide for a final glaze. So I hope this video gives y'all some insight about what to think about when restoring anterior teeth. 
Eventually I'll get to some live tutorials, but bear with me as I try to figure that out. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or a different way of doing things, leave it down in the comment section below as I want that to be an open forum for dentists and pre-dental students alike to share ideas and concepts. I hope you enjoyed the content and enjoy your day.